But nevertheless, uh, the, the whole cosmos is therefore a function of energy, or you could say of light, something like light. And therefore, we and it are all diaphanous. Now, it's easier to see that if you live in a medium where things aren't so dense. There's only one other creature as intelligent as man, and this lives in a medium that is less dense, and this is the dolphin. The dolphin is a mammal, <clears throat> and many millions of years ago it seems that dolphins were living on the land. But they are very clever, and they decided that the land was no place to live, because getting food was difficult, and you had to lug yourself around, and uh, there were many, many bad shows about the land. It had very curious changes of temperature. It became unspeakably cold and unspeakably hot, and you had, in fact, to work. Well, no sensible person ever works. <clears throat> I never work. I get paid for playing. <laughs> And everybody should do that. That's the, the mark of an educated man, is that eventually he gets a job where he's paid for playing. And a worker or a proletarian isn't necessarily a poor man. There are lots of poor, I mean, a poor man like, say, uh, Selig Morgenrath or Eric Barker around here, they're not proletarians. A proletarian is a person who is fettered to the process of work. That is to say, to doing chores every day that he really doesn't like and that aren't in the least interesting in order to go on living. So the, poor, the, the, the dolphins decided this is ridiculous, this land existence, and they went back to the water. And it's pretty easy to fish, you see. There are plenty of fish in the water and things to eat. As we know, the ocean is the greatest food supply in the world. And when they'd eaten a few fish or whatever they need, they decided just to have a ball. So the dolphin can get abreast of a ship, get one of the, of the wakes coming out on the side, can set its tail at an angle of 26 degrees, you know, and be pushed along by the ship. And it's not going anywhere. There's no reason to go along there. As you know, as if it had to get to another part of the sea, the sea's pretty much the same all through. <laughs> but they're just going, boom. And they chatter and dance, and they're, they're, they're really highly civilized beings. And so, uh, please don't anybody ever kill dolphins or be unkind to dolphins, because they're exemplary, high-minded creatures. And we shall soon discover this. As soon as we can set up communication with them, they will tell us all about it, and we will uh, then invent a new style of civilization based on uh, frolic. frolic. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, they, 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 they dance in the, in the mode of water. Now, human beings, uh, as Toynbee has pointed out, as their civilization progresses, they begin to lose their roots. And they are less and less tied to the land. They go into the air. And what's going to happen... Uh, as if man develops without blowing himself to bits, if he can get over the hurdle, you see, that dangerous point, is that gradually all roads are going to disappear. And the earth will have centers of human habitation, you see, but no roads. They'll be as obsolete as railroad tracks because everybody will fly. And once you're, the, the medium of air is much more fluid than the medium of water, and as we fly, you see, on the land, your values are all values of permanence, solidity, firmness. They're architectonic in the sense of our great stone structures, pyramids, and things like that. But in the air and on the water, all values are fluid. And what you have to know to be a good airman is, of course, stars. like white throats and other migrating birds migrate by the stars. Imagine. 
But once you start relating yourself to the stars, you realize that you're living in a universe where directions are all relative. And you become a being capable of existing in non-solidity. And that's why Buckminster Fuller, you know, believed that all techniques and really all culture came from the sea. The men who first learned to sail were the wise men. He has a fantastic idea that there were initiates, great priests who were ship's captains. And that though some of their humble seamen didn't know all the secrets, that these priests were the first people who knew that the world was round. And that uh, that gives one an entirely different theology, you see, than if you believe that the world is flat. And uh, so from the, the, the priests of the ocean, the landsmen learned how to use cranes, blocks and tackles, how to build, how what a good house an overturned ship made. And so to this day, a cathedral has a nave as its central auditorium, nave from Latin navis, ship, showing the connections between ships and the first temples. And so Fuller goes on to say, now if you're a good architect, as the ancient architects learned from the ocean, first thing you should do when you get through architectural school is go and work in an airplane factory and understand the, the, the beautiful thing that man has made in a fine, fine airplane, you see, which is as great as a bird in its own way, because that's the architecture of insecurity. <laughs> and that really lives with insecurity. <laughs> well, let's have an intermission.